guys i'm back with another video and today we are talking blanker chasing <laughs> so apparently i'm not the only one that chases blankers i think a lot of us are but i'm doing this video in collaboration with the beautiful lulu who is even more of a blanker chaser than i am um did i hear that phrase from her Either way, I've been wanting to do this because it's getting ridiculous. Um, the amount of flankers I'm amassing <laughs> and I haven't done um, full videos about them like my Alien and Lancome La Nuit Tresor lines. So I did want to talk about this idea of flanker chasing when you are really heavy into perfumes collecting or just enjoying perfumes so flanker chasing um many of you may know what a flanker is but for those who don't a flanker is a version of an original perfume so um there's perhaps la via bell but then la via bell will have la via bell um, rose or La Via Bell Intensive. So there's different versions of this pillar fragrance. So today I'm going to talk about um, three of my top lines that I have chased the flankers. <laughs> and so to start out, um, I think I first introduced to you guys my Moogler collection. So Definitely when I started this perfume journey, I chased Angel and Alien Flankers. For a matter of fact, I just chased Moogler, period, because I do have Aura or Manatee Flankers. Like, it's just out of control. So, um, while I will link those videos, because there's two videos of my Moogler collection, um, just going through all the different ones that I have, I wanted to tell you about my top two or three from um, this collection. My angel that started it all was the 2019 version of Angel EDT. So this is your classic angel, but because it's the EDT, it's lighter and fresher. Like the original one was more dense with that um chocolatey hazelnut notes but this one is lighter it's fruitier it's brighter and it's started this entire perfume journey next flanker that i absolutely love um is this moogler's angel nova so this particular one i had to let like grow on me just a little bit because She's so bright, fresh, tart, and fruity that it was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's taking me back to, ooh, skin in my eyes. But it was taking me back to those fruity floral days where it didn't have much dimension or any depth that I prefer nowadays in my perfumes. But this one does have rose, a raspberry, lychee, um there is hockey gollywood and benzoin in this one she is so bright and so sweet and tart that it could be off-putting for a lot of people which it was a bit to me in the beginning but she's just so happy and rich and cute in her pink bottom Next one, I'm going to move into the aliens, my top two aliens, and they would be Alien Mirage. So this is the alien that I think is farthest from the regular alien. You get a little, little bit of an alien, but, um, but it's bright and it's, I've been describing it as cotton blossom on top of alien. If you're ever familiar with that cotton blossom, fresh linen, um, which I guess people refer to the mineral notes that's in this, it's just a delightful scent. 
it's happy, it's bright, it has a little character to it, a little oomph. Um, and I honestly think that while this is great in spring and summer, it can actually be worn year round. So this is my very, I think very favorite one because it's so easy to just wear. It's easy, but has some special nuances to it that I really enjoy. The next one is Alien Essence Absolute. So Alien Essence Absolute to me is very much like the original Alien with a little root beer in it. So that's what I like to call it. I know this particular version has orris root, vanilla, some myrrh, some incense, and it's not the incense that feel like some burning incense because a lot of times that will bother my chest and throat and I do not like that, but this one does not do that. Unfortunately, this one has been discontinued. Um, people are always on the hunt for it. It goes for exorbitant amounts online on the gray market but it is a good one it is cozy sweet um and great to have in the winter time some people are put off by the slight medicinal note that it has um there's like this menthol -y medicinal kind of note that you can smell but it goes away after a little bit and it's a great version of alien so that's the first house that i just flanker chased like on a serious hunt, search, I gotta have, I gotta try, I gotta be in the know, um, to the point where I had never in all of my adult life shopped on eBay. But when it came to these fragrances, and especially, I think Mugler, he is on eBay. <laughs> and it's not as scary as people made it out to be for so many years. I think I just didn't know and didn't really want to know because it seemed too shady. And I'm pretty sure um, years past has gotten way better and just a better experience for consumers. So yeah, that's totally a marketplace that I shop now. The next house is going to be Lancome's La Nuit Tresor line. I did a whole video of my entire collection and how I chased those flankers and it was a horrendous rabbit hole. It just <laughs> made me realize how much that just wasn't my favorite scent profile. Like I figured that out after buying about six of them, which is ridiculous. But I will link that video. Be sure to check it out if you have not. It's one of my most popular videos to date. Um, but yeah, I go through comparing all of the different flankers. La Nuit Tresor, the OG, is a beautiful, dark, nighttime, sexy, bombshell type of fragrance. It has a type rose in it that's smoky and jammy and the bottle is absolutely gorgeous now the original og was too smoky for me like now that's one with some incense in it that i just cannot tolerate maybe in the air on someone else is most great but emanating from my skin that incense is just it just did not work for me i really tried with it i wanted to love it so much but I ended up giving it away to my sister who said, she said she really liked it. So I figured it would be in a great home with her. Um, so my chasing of those flankers came because I was looking for the better version for me of La Nuit Tresor, hoping that it wouldn't be a smoky. Um, yeah. And so I out of all of the flankers that I've tried, I think my favorite would have to be La Nuit Tresor Nude. So this, my friends, is a beautiful coconut vanilla fragrance. There is some rose and citrus in this to kind of balance out that coconut and vanilla, but it's, it's pretty gorgeous. I love it. It's fun, it's tropical, it's um, 
It's creamy, but it's so sweet. It's a lovely, lovely, lovely fragrance. And actually, I need to just wear this some more. But definitely check out that video where I review all of these to, and find out why. While this is my favorite, this was a slight disappointment for me. So check out that video. Okay, so I'm not sure if my Angel Flinkers and Alien Flinkers rivals this next line of uh, perfumes, but I had to mention them because I think out of all of the Flinkers, almost, this has to be like my favorite line. I think they did a solid job with each and every one of these fragrances. What line am I talking about? I am talking about Giorgio Armani's C line. So I remember getting the OG back in the day and it was so strong. I really think people say that it was stronger back in the day, but I just don't know if my, I just had a baby palette and couldn't handle it. But this was so strong to me. The basis of this C line is a rose. Um, so this one doesn't come off very rose centric when you smell it. Some people say it smells like wine and the top there is Cass's. Um, you have rose and freesia and then there is also vanilla patchouli and broxen and woody notes. But this is a sweet, deep, rich fragrance that is for the mature woman. Um, just meaning you can't be afraid of some richness and depth in the fragrance. Um, this is still a fruity floral, but it is not your regular fruity floral. It's one for someone who just embraces being a grown woman. <laughs> I fell in love with C. Fiore. <sighs> if you've watched my latest videos, I think I've been talking about this one a lot. This is a powdery rose. It's sweet. Um, it does have black currant and mandarin in the top. And then there's vanilla, white musk, and patchouli in the base. But this is all sweet beautiful creamy powdery rose that is just one of the most beautiful pink fragrances i've ever smelled like i love it i love having this it just is so sweet so delicate so feminine um i enjoy having this one and then i also have from the c fiore line and i just think it's so amazing is the Sea Passione. So when I first smelled this, I was quite disappointed because when you say Sea Passione, I'm thinking it's gonna bring the spice, the heat, the the richness and depth like that was just completely way more in your face and bold than the last two that I just mentioned. However, this is a fruity, floral, light, spring, fun, fresh fragrance. I don't know what a passion is in, is in that. However, I don't care what the name is. It is one of my favorite fragrances. So when I smelled it, I was like, it's sweet, it's cute. It kind of smells like shampoo. But when you have it on and it's wafting across your nose and um, in your scent bubble, it is so gorgeous. This is my favorite shampoo fragrance. It doesn't smell very aldehydic or bubbly or anything like that, but it just reminds me of some type of shampoo. And this is, this holds the bar for any shampoo fragrance. So any other one that comes about and think that they have a place in my collection, I'm like, no, I got this. This is all I need when I'm in that mood or in that, um, Frame of mind, it is C. Passione. Okay, so C. Passione is pear, black currant, pink pepper, grapefruit, pineapple, rose, heliotrope, jasmine, vanilla, cedar, patchouli, and amberwood. Oh, she's so gorgeous. 
And lastly, in that line, I have a travel size that I got from Fragrance Net of the Intense. So this is not the one that came out this year. This is the one that came out previously that's originally in a black bottle. So this one um, is, when you smell it, it's like, oh yeah, it's just like the original. Of course, when you put them side by side, the original is a little sweeter, it's a little brighter. This one is actually darker and it's less sweet, in my opinion, than the original. It's different with some added notes of black currant, orange, bergamot, neroli. It just, all the notes just smell like, ooh, it took us to another level. So not like lighter, brighter, fruity, or stronger in that way, but deeper, richer, darker. So, um, I wanted to see what this one was about and if I preferred it over the original. I don't have that answer yet because I just don't. I've enjoyed other things than trying to compare these two. But this is a little darker and the sweetness is taken down, so. So, next we wanna discuss what flankers are we still chasing? <laughs> I think the only one that I am still chasing really, just blindly without seeing the actual product or knowing any notes or what they're coming out with new. Somebody can say a flanker is coming out and I am going to either get it or be pressed to get my nose on it is in is a mugler fragrance i mean i might even have the ice star on its way to me <laughs> has coconut and pineapple how, how could i really turn away from that and i think i'm so crazy guys because i am in such anticipation for this fragrance that i have been to get smoothies regularly and every time I'm like give me mango coconut and pineapple like that's all I want in my smoothies so even though this one doesn't have the mango I do have a mango au crostier and I could totally maybe layer them I don't know but I'm just excited to get it and I will be sure to tell you about it when it comes so what flankers are am I not chasing not trying to chase Definitely La Via Belle. Um, I think it's good that they keep them kind of similar to the original, but a lot of times it may not even be worth having the different flankers. So in my so I brought some out just because I do have La Clot of La Via Belle, and this is different enough to warrant having. La Via Belle on Hulse, Rose, um, this one, you do get more Rose, but these deep, rich scent profiles with the vanilla, iris, benzoin, patchouli, and sandalwood, um, it's probably good to just have one and stick with it, but because Kia is Kia, I also have La Via Belt and Toxamont and intense mint. This one, my nose is acting up with all the fragrances. This one has more um, raspberry in it. So you still have that La Via Belle base, but this one has raspberry. And I actually quite enjoy it, but there are a lot of brands or perfume houses that are coming out with things that are very similar to this and every time I smell something kind of fruity that has like amber or sandalwood it's like oh that smells like Livia Bell or it's just close enough that profile is so close that I don't even want to bother so I think I am not I did not get so like Cristal even though that is a coconut fragrance 
I just have quite a few coconut fragrances that I didn't find that one, one that I wanted to add to my collection. That is it for now. I'm sure at some point there could be a part two because I have quite a few flower bombs that I know I wanted to review. I have quite a few Narciso Rodriguez's that I know I wanted to review. So yeah, if you wanna see those videos, let me know. Um, also, be sure to go to Lou's channel and check out her video now. I'm sure her flanker chaser has, I have nothing on her flankers because I've already seen in some of her lives and other videos, like, whoa, yeah. So I'm excited to check out her video too. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you come back for another video. Um, definitely leave a comment down below. What is your, like, line of perfume that you flanker chase? Are you a flanker chaser? Tell me so I don't feel too bad about, <laughs> too bad about this stuff. I know Lulu is in it with me. She's definitely a flanker chaser, but are you? Let us know. All right, guys. It's been fun. See you next video. Bye.